See, marriage is not a commodity that you carry on your head, but many people carry it on their head. It's just an arrangement so that socially there is some sense to the way you fulfill the needs that you have. A human being has needs, physical, psychological, emotional, financial, social, various kinds of needs. To fulfill these things in a dignified manner, we came up with something called marriage, so that it is fulfilled within a framework. Your desires don't run wild and disturb everything in the society, some kind of a framework, so that it can be con conducted in a sensible manner. Now you have raised this to heaven because somebody told you marriages are made in heaven. <laughs> Only the unmarried ones think so. So it's just two people, all right? Now, spiritual process is about turning inward. Can I turn inward with somebody else? <laughs> Marriage is an arrangement to fulfill certain aspect of your life. Don't complicate life by thinking we will walk together on the spiritual path, there's no such thing. Because spiritual path is not <laughs> not the path that you take into the Velangiri Mountains, that you want to walk together. Even if you go to Velangiri Mountains, please don't walk hand in hand. <laughs> it's a narrow pathway and it's not an appropriate way to walk in the forest. You can walk in the park hand in hand. You can go shopping hand in hand. You can sit in a cinema hand in hand. You can't turn inward hand in hand. Now, does it mean to say someone who's married, what it means, let's understand this. Someone who is married means someone who's made an official arrangement for their needs in life, a formal arrangement for simple needs that a human being has, which are biological, which are psychological, which are social, many things. So these arrangements that you have made, conduct these arrangements gracefully, so there will be time and space for you to turn around. If you pay excess attention to these arrangements, then turning around will not be possible. This does not mean if you're alone, you will do it. If you're alone, you may be always looking out. You spend your entire time and life looking out for somebody. That will also not help. If you think your desires, your longings and your needs can be well handled by an arrangement of marriage, all right? Don't try to raise it to heaven. It doesn't happen in heaven, believe me. And if heaven is making so many mistakes, <laughs> then we'll have to seriously reconsider many things <laughs> So, of course, uh, in India, we don't blame it on the heaven, we do our own calculations. 
of all the arrangements of stars and planets and everything, we match all the planets and stars very well. It's very easy to ma match stars because they never fought ever. <laughs> but to match these two people, that nobody has managed except those two people if they are sensible. If they are sensible, they can manage it. Nobody else can match these two people. Priests have tried, gods have tried, ghosts and goblins have tried, it's not worked and not worked and not worked. Two sensible people, they can manage. If both of them understand the limitations of the arrangement and the possibilities of the arrangement, they can conduct it sensibly. If you try to raise it to heaven, you will see it will for sure crash. So your marriage has nothing to do with your spiritual process because your spiritual process is an inward journey. But one dimension of this is, to walk alone people falter. Actually this question was asked to Gautama, the Buddha. Is it better to walk alone or in company? Gautama looked and said, it's better to walk alone than to walk with a fool. Because Gautama, not me, okay? Gautama believes only a fool will marry you. <laughs> it's him, not me, okay? <laughs> so the word marriage might have acquired a very negative aura around it in certain parts of the world now because they have some sense of very juvenile freedom. Marriage is a bad thing when you are a young person. But when you were a child, it was a great thing. Yes or no? When you were a little child, you are for the institution of marriage. When you are eighteen, you are against it. When you are forty-five, again you are for it. Isn't it so? When you were children, did you not wish that your father, mother and a stable situation existed around you? Was that not a natural longing? So when you are five, you are for marriage. Not your own, somebody else's. <laughs> when you are eighteen, you are against because right now your physical body is in a certain mode, marriage looks like a bondage, a chain. You want to do things in a certain way, but slowly as the body weakens, once again you wish there was somebody with you in a committed way, isn't it? Yes or no? This is a very a juvenile feeling that when I am strong I don't need anybody. When I become weak, I wish there was somebody with me. No, I think partnership should be formed when you are at the peak of your well-being. Isn't it so? Not when you have fallen. When you have fallen, if you seek a partnership, you will make bad partnerships, desperate partnerships. When you are well, when you are at the peak of your life, that is when you must make a partnership which will take you through all those ups and downs. <laughs> but now the problem is the partnership itself is taking me down. That is a complaint. Partnership itself is taking you down. That is because uh, of the way you are. No, no, I'm okay, it's the other person. That is what the problem is with you. <laughs> That is what is problem with you, you think you are okay and somebody else is wrong, that is the basics. Somewhere once in a way it so happened, completely disaligned people met and something happened, maybe the need to break it may happen. But for every whim and fancy, breaking these relationships is not a good thing. Above all, you must understand as body, as mind has memory, 
physical body has its own memory. This is called Runanubandha. You have heard of a word like this? The Indian people? Runanubandha? Runanubandha means it's the physical memory. Physical body itself has its memory. If it goes through certain experiences, it remembers. And body responds and reacts in many ways in future based on this memory. Physical intimacies always cause this memory in a big way. And if you imprint with too many memories and there is a certain level of confusion in the body, you work out everything in your life, still you will find you do not know what it means to be blissful. There is no ease. There is no ease in your system because there is a complex impressions of memory in your system and it can confuse the body in such a way that it will cause much trouble to one's life. You must see, first of all, whether for you as a person is it such an important thing or is it just a passing thing? I would say for at least 25 to 30 percent of the people they need not even go in that direction because it is just a passing interest. For another 30 to 40 percent, it may be a little more long. They get into this. For 10 years, 12 years, they feel good. After that, they think it's a burden. <coughs> there are some people for whom the need is very strong, that they need this. Another 25, 30 percent need it for a much longer period. They definitely need to get into such arrangements and whatever.